Hi guys, it's Diana. If you don't know me, I am a Twitch streamer. I do a lot of Skyrim modding. I've been doing it for years and I have a lot of knowledge up here. So today I'm going to be sharing how to decipher Skyrim crashes. So essentially, what is a CTD? I'm sure most people who mod their games know what a CTD is. CTD essentially is when you get a crash to desktop. I have a Skyrim stability video which I will link in the description. However, today is going to be focused on Netscript framework and deciphering the true source of your CTD. So this has been a requested video in which I'm going to make and I'm going to be doing an installation tutorial as well and essentially explaining how to decipher exactly what is crashing your game due to this amazing mod called Netscript Framework. So without any further ado, let's go ahead and jump right on into this. Okay, so first off, you're going to need to go to this page right here. Everything will be linked in the description below. This is Netscript Framework, and essentially it is going to generate a crash log for you whenever you CTD, in which will tell you what mods are being loaded at the exact time of your said crash to desktop. So what you're going to need is DLL Plugin Loader or SSC Engine Fixes SKSE Preloader. I do actually have both of these, it does say to pick one only, but I was having an issue with Netscript, so I personally have both. If you don't already have SSC Engine Fixes, I mean, realistically, you should have this regardless. This is a freaking huge mod. It's going to fix a lot of problems and it should be done regardless. Now, if you're wondering how to install uh, this DLL file, essentially all you have to do is manually download it. I'll go ahead and just do a quick show of how exactly to do this. So it's going to be a DLL file, so all you really have to do is hit the README file and it's going to give you the precise instructions. You're going to go ahead and go to your SE directory, and the file path is right here. We're going to go ahead and find bank w64.dll, all right, and then we're going to name rename it with an underscore at the end. So as you can see, this is the original file, correct? So we're going to go ahead and then put an underscore under this one. This realistically wouldn't be in here at this point quite yet. So you're going to go ahead and find this file exactly like this says, and you're going to go ahead and put an underscore under it. Okay. So then with this said, you're going to download the bink w64 file, which is in the downloads right here. And you're going to go ahead and drag this into a Skyrim special edition. So now you should have two, the one that we just downloaded from the folder, which is this one and the original one that we renamed with the underscore. It's quite that simple. So back to Netscript, extract contents of archived data directory of the game or use a mod manager. I personally download these sorts of things manually. So we're going to go ahead and download this. Now, once this is downloaded, it will open and you will have these things in here. So we're going to go ahead and just drag these things into the Skyrim root directory folder. Once that is done, Netscript framework will then be installed. So now you might wonder, how am I going to decipher my crash? First of all, you need to generate a crash. So if you are having a crash in a specific area or whatever is occurring, get your game to crash now that you have Netscript framework installed. Once you have that all taken care of and done, and your game has generated a crash, you're going to go to wherever Netscript Framework is. So this is going to depend on which mod manager you have. Um, it's going to depend on a couple of things here. So if you did install it manually, it should be somewhere in your Skyrim data directory folder. If you did install this with your with Vortex or MOT, you just actually have to find the location of it. So mine is installed through MO2 Skyrim Mods Overwrite Netscript Framework Crash. So with that said, let's go ahead and take a look at this. Okay, so this is a perfect example of a CTD that I had. So essentially, there was an issue with an NPC, a refugee to be exact. Let me full screen this just in case. So this essentially was causing my CTD in this specific instance. I do believe I ended up getting rid of this mod because I was having multiple CTDs with it and it's just not worth it. If you have a mod that causes a CTD once, twice, three times, honestly, it's fine. If you have a CTD or a specific mod causing a CTD more than I would say five, six, seven times, 
check your load order, adjust your load order, handle it from there. And if things are still fucked, if the mod is just happening to cause CDDs repeatedly no matter what, you're going to have to be forced to get rid of it. I had this really amazing mod called Castle Dracula. It was like one of my favorite mods ever. Every single time I went to Falkreath, CTD, CTD, CTD. Change load order, change load order, change load order. Even went as so far to do an SSE edit and clean the file, clean the entire mod. Uh, CTD, 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 Falkreath, every single time. Uninstalled, disabled the mod, zero CTDs whatsoever. So some mods simply will not run in your game no matter what. It's rare that that happens, but it will happen. So you just have to be aware of these things. Essentially, again, uh, if you're having a mod that crashes you a couple times, it should be fine. You could probably, again, readjust your load order, test, and go from there. However, if there is one persistent mod causing CDDs, no matter what you do, purge it. It's just simply not worth it. You don't want to have your play experience ruined by a constant CDD. Therefore, Netscript Framework gives you a crash log in which you can decipher what exactly is going on. So, I removed populated lands, uh, this ESP, and my CDD stopped. It's really quite as simple as that. I mean, I have a lot of crash logs here. Um, skeleton NIF files, uh, annoying as shit. So hopefully you guys don't have that one. <laughs> Merge Citizens, AI overhaul, you know, it, it's like, it really depends. So this specific instance actually ended up being something very strange. I just needed a particle light mod. I forget exactly what the name is, but this, this entirely fixed it. I, I suppose I was maybe having a missing NIF file or something of the sort. So my game was CDDing, in which case I downloaded the mod and everything was fine. So, you know, there will be different problems arising. However, this is meant to tell you what exactly is causing it. And as long as you get your CDDs to a minimum, you know, it's, it's rare. You can hopefully play for a couple hours without even having one CDD. I mean, I have almost 900 mods and I crash maybe one out of like every 12 times, if not even less. Between knowing how to load your load order and following these instructions and having Netscript Framework, your game should be stable. There's really no reason for it not to be stable. Again, I do have a Skyrim stability guide if you guys are interested in that. Link will be down in the description below if you're struggling. It is worth a shot of listening to. The video was cultivated essentially to encompass how to create a stable game with all of these elements combined. Today was just a tutorial on specifically how to do Netscript Framework, but there are many things involved in which can create a very stable, heavily modded game, right? I mean, I can play my game for fucking five hours on end and not even encounter a single CDD, or I could play for five hours on end and encounter one or two CDDs in which then I know I have something specific that is causing the problem. So what am I going to do from there? I'm going to go to Netscape Framework, see exactly what's happening. And especially if you get two generated logs and they both have the same mod name in it, I mean, that's a clear depiction that that's just clearly causing issues. In which case, again, you can go ahead and change your loader or swap it around, see if that helps, maybe load it very last, see if that does a trick. If not, then simply just purge the mod. Really not a big deal. You're not going to usually have mods that are very persistent in, in CTD, but you will have them, you know, occasionally, especially the higher loadout you have. You have hundreds and hundreds of mods. Um, it's likely that a little rat could kind of just sneak in there and you know go ahead and try to ruin the whole thing but um tools like this are excellent for solving the exact source of the ctd i hope that this video was informative to anybody who is wondering how exactly to install netscript framework and how to read the crash log i hope that you guys take care and thank you so much for watching bye